All right, so welcome back. Got some pretty good uh, reception on my peer review videos. People want to learn more about this book written by Terrence Howard. So it took me like, what, uh, 25 minutes just to get through page two. So it, it would take me a really long time to get through this entire book. We've got the about the author stuff. I've never seen so much fluff in one book. You know what I mean? He's got a dedication, he's got acknowledgments, all sorts of stuff that's not even related to the book. So I figured maybe we'd start at the table of contents and just kind of see what's going on here. But even the table of contents is confusing. Because he's got, like it doesn't match up with the pictures over here, right? So he's got introduction, cool, he's got let's move forward. But then th this whole section, the unbalanced equation, identity property, math 101, that doesn't even have a picture over here. Like you can't even click an icon over here and have it go to the, that section. The next section that he has is challenging the status quo. So it's like he skipped an entire section here. Then he's got relative factoring, uh, insights and deductive reasoning. He doesn't have the rest of this stuff. It's difficult to tell what's a chapter and what's like a subsection of a chapter. He kind of mixes them back and forth. He's established laws of thermodynamics. Established laws of thermodynamics doesn't even have its own section. That seems like a big deal. The Babylonian stuff doesn't, he's got the gold standard, which this doesn't even have a label, but I think that picture is money being weighed against gold and then money being weighed against a computer, which is weird. He has a crash course in particle physics and quantum mechanics, but over here it's just called a crash course in particle physics, which again seems weird to me because it seems like it would be easier just to edit the text versus editing the picture that the text is is displayed on so i'm not sure why he did that he doesn't have an icon over here for common sense and mankind's hasten departure from it he does have the tarian wave fields but he doesn't have uh, garden of eden and flower of life universal mathematics he's got this fruit from sacred tree of life then invisible states of matter is like down here right so this isn't even it's not even in the right order Fruit from the sacred tree of life. He doesn't have anything here, but then he's got invisible states of matter, which seems pretty small over here, but it's like it's got its own like picture and section over here. And then he's some of them are just pictures. Like there's this structure, there's the thing with the with the scales. This one's just literally just the number one. It is an interactive book, which is cool. Like you can so you can touch here on any page to return. If you hit the spine, if you touch the spine, or if you click the spine, I'm not sure, he says touch. I find that either really young people say that a lot or really older generational people do if they are not too computer savvy. Maybe they only use like tablets and, and phones and stuff and not they don't click, they just they touch. He does have some sculptural stuff, which is cool. A lot of the book is pictures. You know, I say it has 162 pages, but a lot of it's pictures. So it's not its not really like a 162-page book. Although then he's got this weird thing where he does like two pages on one PDF page. I'm not sure why he does that. So again, like when, I, when I'm going back to this, I'm really trying to find the, the sections that are more math-based, that have more math, like more math content that we can, that I can, that I can get into. So I am somewhat familiar with this book. I've gone over it like once or twice last summer. I haven't seen it much lately. So I still I have kind of a, a clean slate going in. You know, and I've been wanting to kind of approach it with um, a fresh mind or, you know, basically whenever I get come back to this book, I record a video of it because I think it's important to, to just see my, my actual reaction in real time. I would not call this like reaction content, but I think a lot of people watch these videos because they're interested to see like what what is someone that has a background in mathematics and for me computer science or someone that has a background in science in general, what do they think when they see this book when they read some of this some parts of this book? And overall, I mean, it's just it's really confusing. It's a really it's not really well put together. There's a lot of fluff. He's got 
So even page, page two took me about 25 minutes to get through. Then we had Sky's Letter of the World, Sky's Meme. Uh, that's covered in part one, if you want to see that. He quotes, by the way, thank you to everyone out there that, that in my comments that verified this climbing on rainbows. This is a line from a song by the band Bread. It's a, a rock and roll band from the 70s. They're called Bread. And that's where that line comes. Terrence Howard didn't even mention that here. So it's, you know, again, he put he, he did put quotation marks around it, but he also put quotation marks here, which I don't think loose thread is a, a quote from a song. You know, so he's pretty inconsistent about what he's doing here. What I find really interesting is that even people close to him, I don't think have read this book. Like, I don't think anyone, I think barely anyone in existence has actually sat down and and gone through this because no one even pointed out the insuring thing i found a couple other uh spelling and errors and stuff when i was looking through this but for the most part it is it's brand new to me like i haven't seen it in a while i haven't really deep dived it so i think the one of the first things we can do is get an overview of what's happening here i considered using the table of contents to, to click on different things, but then I, I realized that the, the table of contents is not well put together. So out, out of all things that are not well put together in this book, the table of contents is one of them. But we can kind of scroll through the book and point out some of the, I guess maybe some of the main ideas and some of the, the things that he's trying to, whatever it is that he's trying to communicate here. He's got an introduction which already, it's already on the ninth page when he puts in something called introduction. So I don't know what the first eight pages were doing. You know, they were not introducing you to the book, I guess. Yes, from the beginning of time, man's curiosity and unquenchable thirst for knowledge equipped his descendants with the tools necessary for our species to climb into the cold, damp, and barren tunnels that littered the Earth's crust. So he's literally going through the history of mankind, I think. Climb over at the ladder, yeah, bottom of the food chain. Okay, so he's going through creation. 1.75 million years. I'm, I'm pretty sure he gets this stuff wrong as well, but I'm not qualified enough to, to speak to it. Anyone in the comments wants to read this section of the book? I don't think that I'm going to read it. Homo sapiens, yeah. Again, a lot of pictures, chessboard. This is the truth, this is the light, this is the way. Isn't that something religious? That sounds religious-y. Like, anyone that's like super religious out there, is this offensive to you? This is the truth and the light. Isn't that like a Jesus quote? Didn't Jesus say that? Again, he compares himself to Jesus with his, his uh, walking on water for tips thing. He says that a lot. The walking on water for tips line that he does. Let's move forward. Extinction. This one seems more mathy. A little tackle the question of mathematics. Okay, so maybe we can get more into this one. Let's move forward. He's got unbalanced equation. Okay, so I think this is his proof. Like, the one that he, remember he posted it on Twitter for everyone out there in the Terrence Howard Extended Cinematic Universe. Remember, he posted all this on Twitter, like, I think it was maybe 2017. And I think he revised it since then. This version of the book was 2021. I think he was like, okay, let me let me improve that proof. Which, it's not a proof. You can't call it a proof. We can definitely put that into its own, like, OneNote file. We can deep dive into that. So, this is a long proof. And on page 18, he's like, therefore, 1 times 1 equals 1 must be rewritten as 1 times 1 equals 2. So, apparently, that's the end of his proof. We'll, 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 we'll do that. We'll definitely get into a video completely dedicated to just his proof. This, this is, this is offensive. This is, this is uncalled for. Why is he doing this? So, I guess, so, you know how he uses words that don't mean the same? Like, he uses different meanings of words when they're used in different contexts. I'm not really sure what to call that, but... So, he doesn't like the identity property, 
And then he compares it to the Jim Crow laws, which I, 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 like, you know how he says, he doesn't understand, like, he says laws, like the identity law, or the, yeah, what does he say here, laws governing the physics of our universe, so Newton's laws, he thinks is the same thing as the Jim Crow laws. These are laws written in courtrooms or in legislatures that has nothing at all to do with laws in physics or laws relating to mathematics. It's just, it's, it's, it's not the same thing. It's not the same law. It doesn't mean the same thing. Different usage. So that's really weird. That he, That's really offensive that he does that. He compares uh, mathematical laws and things like the laws of conservation of energy and compares that to the laws of, to the Jim Crow laws that he, that again, were really, but they were just racist laws that were written by racist people in racist times. But that kind of law, when you write a law in Congress, when you are a lawmaker, a legislature, and you're writing a law in Congress, that's not the same thing as writing a law or identifying a law in mathematics. Very different thing and science. Very different thing. You know, you, you look at it like uh, action and reaction. It's Newton's third law. That is a different usage of the word law than the Jim Crow laws. So Terrence Howard, not only are you an idiot, but you are just really being really offensive to a lot of people in many ways. Really, yeah. Okay, so he does math 101. He's still on this. So he's got a proof up here, right? He's got a proof that, okay, 1 times 1 does not equal 1. It equals 2. He, says, he even says therefore. That's usually how you end a proof in math. You usually say therefore. And then he just keeps on with it. So he goes on and on with 1 times 1 equals this ing is, is really strange, too. 1 times 1 equaling 1. Usually you would just put the equal sign there. You could probably kind of infer to say ing. He talks about laws of conservation of energy. Might as well pack up and move away. <laughs> because he, how can a something multiplied by a nothing cause the something to disappear? Why are things disappearing with the law of conservation of energy? Quote, unquestionable God rules. That can't be from a song. So again, he's got quotation marks around. That's not from, that's, I'm pretty sure that wasn't from bread. Okay, so, 6,000 years. Undefined term. He uses undefined terms a lot. Unquestionable God rules? What does that mean? That's not even a thing. Uh, so he keeps going on and on about 1 times 1 not equaling 1, even though he's apparently already proved it. It's weird. It's like this whole book is, he's just saying the same stuff over and over. He's saying the same things in different ways, all equally incorrect, even though they're so different. It, it's astonishing. So we'll definitely get into some more of this stuff later. You know what? In the, I'll have a thing in the in the. I'll, maybe I'll make a poll, like, or if you want to in the comments, like, suggest to me a section or a page number that you want me to go over, because there's way too much going on here. Oh look, he does the three three times three equals nine stuff. I wonder how he makes that make sense now. Uh, really long book. So I don't really know what to make of this cartoon here. It's a bunch of like little wooden children being taught by an axe. And this guy's, I guess he's made of wood. So I mean, I'm not sure if this is like an anti-educational type of cartoon or if it's... Because the thing is, like, they're all made of wood. Like, are, is it trying to be like, okay, like the, they're sculpting? Like the teacher is sculpting their their minds and their their personalities and their ideas or, or whatever, 
as a positive thing? Because this guy is like, hey, look, I made a wood. You know, I'm... And he's, like, willingly delivering his or her... Just willingly, like, dropping their, their kid off, who's their kid is, like, a block of wood. Which, I'm not sure why they would be placed in the same classroom with... This children that are obviously sculpted very, very carefully with wood. That's not the same... They're not going to be at the same level. Yeah, it's like this is like a kindergartner. These are probably like fifth, fourth or fifth graders. But I don't get it. So this person's willingly dropping their... This person's obviously doing okay, right? They're made of wood. They wouldn't be able to do much if they were just like, you know, a log and still had leaves coming out of them or whatever. So I don't know what to make of the cartoon. Because I don't know if it's an anti-education cartoon. I mean, I guess you could say, you know, axes are bad for wood, but it's it's not showing that it's being bad for the wood. It's it's just like kind of sculpting the wood or the logs, whatever, into like these little wooden creatures that obviously are are doing okay, doing okay enough that like the the little the father or mother wooden person is like, hey, I want to send my kid to that to to get that same process happened to him so i don't know what this is in reference to um it's not having anything to do with the story that's going on around it it's just a weird just a weird little cartoon that you put in here okay scrolling he's got a weird story he's got a lot of weird personal narratives in here that are just strange and probably not true one for all for one uh, he's, he, again, a lot of pictures. He's got a human embryo, a chicken embryo, a fish embryo. I don't know what's what's up with that. It looks like he's quoting the transitive property, probably not in the correct way. Um, planets and things. Again, he's back on with the identity property. I don't know why he keeps bringing stuff back up that he's already covered in previous sections. I don't know what's... I don't know why he's doing this. Look, he's still on this. We're like 41 pages in. He's still on 1 times 1 equals... Jeez, he cannot... 1 times 1 equals more than just 1. He's still on it. 42 pages and he's still on it. Let's hear what sound has to say on the matter. Great. Got sound. Look at this, page 49. He's still on this. <laughs> he's trying to make the same argument in this entire book he never gets off of that it's weird he talks about conservation of energy again <sighs> anyway um good luck to everyone please like comment subscribe uh, more videos coming this summer or you can check out my other channel which has a a bunch of old math content and i plan to actually update that with more math more math and computer science stuff uh, this summer. Thanks a lot.